So but first of all, a very warm welcome to uh, the Prime Minister, um, the Minister of Canterbury Earthquake Recovery, Mr Brownlee, Nikki Wagner, the Associate Minister for Earthquake Recovery, Leanne Dalziel, um, leaders from the arts community, city councillors, and I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody off. But look, there's a lot of people who've worked very, very hard over the last, for the months and years to get to this stage here. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, and perhaps I just welcome the Prime Minister up to the stage to um, have a few words. Thank you. Fantastic. Roger, thanks very much. I will resist any commentary about your hair, but it looks very nice. I have. Well, no, well, I've only tangentially mentioned it. You look I thought you looked very corporate, didn't you, on the way in? You know? <laughs> Performing arts will have to get you to be a little bit more out there after this. But anyway, uh, Leanne, can I just acknowledge you and the great work you're doing here in Christchurch? Uh, Jerry, uh, likewise. Um, and Nikki, just want to acknowledge you and, and the great things you're doing. So we're here to confirm that um, $12.5 million will be spent on the Music Centre for Christchurch. Uh, which will soon begin construction in the Performing Arts Precinct. This is a significant step forward for the precinct and for the reconstruction of the central city. We also today want to show you what we uh, want to achieve in terms of the overall look of the precinct once it's been completed. In addition, I can also tell you that positive negotiations are continuing with the Court Theatre and the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra, and we hope to soon to be able to confirm that these organisations will join uh, with the Music Centre within the precinct alongside the refurbished Isaac Theatre Royal. These new arts facilities will be connected by a public open space and served by a new privately built car parking building within the precinct area. The precinct is being jointly led and delivered by the Crown and the Christchurch City Council. Crown's contribution is the land acquisition process and the design and delivery of the public open space. Being able to confirm this first step today for the Music Centre of Christchurch is a significant sign of further progress with the rebuild of the central city. What we are seeking to create here is almost a complete city block with a dedicated arts and performance uh, theme. I can imagine it being ext an extremely vibrant and popular place to come and enjoy performing arts festivals and the precinct will also be a general gathering place to enjoy a meal or a drink before a show or maybe after work. The neighbouring block that will eventually house the convention centre precinct will also be a busy hub and having an arts precinct with such a variety of entertainment options just across the street will be a big draw card for both visitors and locals alike. Public spaces within the precinct will also link through to other public areas surrounding the block, including the square and the retail precinct. This is part of the overall connectivity of the new central city core, uh, and we'll uh, see uh, uh, contemporaries enjoying uh, and enabling all public spaces to be easily linked together, including the residential development in the east frame, right through to the south frame, and through to Hagley Park. The overall results of these developments will be the creation of a city core that is easily accessible but also visually stimulating. Building on the successful restoration of the Isaac Theatre Royal, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the Performing Arts Precinct develop in the coming months, starting with the Music Centre's uh, construction. So I want to develop, uh, congratulate all of the organisations involved as they work towards uh, the development of this exciting precinct. Uh, can I just say that... Uh, Arts and culture has always been something that's been very important and much loved here in Christchurch and the wider Canterbury area. This precinct is going to be a great opportunity to have lots of like-minded organisations collaborating in one place together. I think you're going to see uh, people from not only just around the Canterbury area but around New Zealand coming to watch performances and enjoying uh, some of the spectacular shows that will be on display. So uh, this is a very important step forward for a city known for its love of arts and culture and it's another positive step that the rebuild is on track. So thanks for having me here today. I'd now like to introduce my minister, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. <coughs> Does he need much introduction? Sorry. Well, thank you, Roger. And uh, I'm sure that you've all heard and hear that Roger's hair is growing back at the rate of half a centimetre, uh, uh, half, half a millimetre a day. 
Right. So by the time he's 60, he looked like he did before they shaved him. So that's all. Um, it's not usual for someone to speak uh, uh, from the, the cabinet after the Prime Minister. I only do so uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a flavour and detail for what's happening here. So the government has acquired uh, most of the land in this block, apart from that that remains uh, privately owned, uh, as well as the land across the other side of the road. And what we are entering into here is a strong collaboration between us and the Christchurch City Council and the individual parties who might eventually come into here. So in this first arrangement, uh, the music school will be building their building uh, in the location that's indicated on the map behind me, uh, and they will be uh, taking on a, a very long-term lease at very favourable conditions uh, from, the, uh, from the government effectively, uh, with the option of purchase at a future time. It's a way in which we can maximise the capital available uh, in the various organisations to build splendid facilities that will last them uh, for a very, very long time. And I understand the Christchurch Music School has got a 100-year-plus history. Someone who's from the school might correct me on that. I remember myself being sent on the bus to learn the recorder at the uh, old premises some years ago. Um, not a, exactly a shining example of your success. <laughs> But you worked on numbers, there was a hundred of us, and I just sat there with the thing up to my lips and pretended it was great. <laughs> Everyone else made the noise. Um, the uh, uh, opportunity, though, to bring others in here and to create something quite unique in, in New Zealand, in fact, uh, is, I think, the most exciting part. And with the convention centre across the road, uh, and you can look forward to some announcements about progress there very, very shortly, uh, it's going to be quite a dynamic area of the city. So I just want to uh, congratulate the Music School for uh, reaching the, the agreement to move in, encourage the others. Uh, Ross, I think it's a perfect home for you here. Oh, that's a yes. That's good. Uh, uh, and, uh, of course, the Symphony Orchestra as well. Thanks very much. I'd also now like to welcome Leanne Dalziel, who's been a very strong supporter of this initiative. Welcome, Leanne. Thank you. Prime Minister, thank you very much for what has been a wonderful announcement uh, today. Uh, Minister Brownlee, Minister um, Wagner and uh, 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 Roger Sutton, thank you for um, organising uh, this particular occasion. Uh, Steve Jones, Chair of the uh, Music Centre of Christchurch, Gretchen LaRoche, CEO of Christchurch Symphony Orchestra, uh, Neil Cox, Managing Director of the Isaac Theatre Royal, and Philip Aldridge, Chief Executive of the Court Theatre. What a great lineup of um, people that are really the expression of the hopes and dreams of our city for a performing arts precinct. So it's just great to be here today. And it's fantastic to be able to um, participate in the welcoming of this important announcement. My heart sank when I learned of the government's intention to put the land purchase for this precinct on hold, um, but my sinking heart has been well and truly uplifted um, as a result of the announcement today. After the repair of our homes and our communities, there is nothing more important than the arts for our city's recovery. We lost so much of the cultural fabric of our city in the earthquake, and this announcement sees that not only res restored, but also reinvigorated with the different venues coming together in the one place. Although today's announcement focuses on the Music Centre, the Council was committed to working with Sarah, uh, with the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra and the Court Theatre to make the whole precinct come together as envisaged. We remain committed to investing $30 million as agreed, as well as ensuring that there is parking in the area. Um, I'm really pleased that we've managed a way to find to resolve the arrangements around the precinct, and um, I particularly like the fact that we are now uh, working jointly with the government on this exciting project. And I want to, in that respect, acknowledge Warwick Isaacs and the extraordinary efforts that he has gone to um, to make this happen uh, with his team. Although different projects have different leads under our cost-sharing agreement with the government, I like the feel of the joint venture that this has now become. And what a great joint venture to be involved in with the government, if not the performing arts. 
I've spoken of how there is nothing more that the people of Christchurch like than to see the minister and I, as mayor of Christchurch, standing side by side in a partnership arrangement which this now represents. So it is a fantastic result for the city. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul. The arts are the window to a city's soul. It is through art that we can see things that are often hidden from view. We can experience things through the creativity of others. We can hear the truth at times when that is sometimes hidden from view as well. We can be moved to places that transcend our lives, we, the, the lives we are leading. The arts can truly lead our inner recovery and create places where we can laugh, where we can cry, and we, where we can enjoy life. So from that perspective, this announcement foreshadows the life and the soul that will be restored to our city, and it is welcome indeed. Thank you. I'd now like to call to the stage Steve Jones. So Steve is the chair of the Music Centre of Christchurch. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Roger. Um, Roger actually said I've got 20 minutes, so I'll take the first two. The last 18 are all yours. Okay. So in its pre-earthquake life, the Music Centre of Christchurch was located in, in Barbados Street. The former historic building uh, was saved from demolition by a, a group of people who saw the vision for a music and arts hub in Christchurch. We had been thriving there for, for over 20 years and we expected to be there for many more. The earthquake events forced the need for considerable change in Christchurch, not the least being where buildings, business, the arts and people would interact but it has created a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the city. The trustees of the Music Centre are delighted to be part of the vision to bring the arts back to the central city in the form of the arts precinct. We are most grateful to the government for its generous provision in recognition, sorry, provision of land and recognition of the Music Centre as a key community facility. This is a significant milestone for music and arts in Christchurch. And as you've seen from our pictures up on the wall, the drawings, the Music Centre will be located within the Arts Precinct to the north of the Isaac Theatre Royal with its entrance on Armagh Street. Planned for the site is a Music Centre building designed by Alan Wilkie of Wilkie and Bruce Architects the building will provide facilities for performing, rehearsing, recording, teaching and examining. It will include a 350-seat concert hall and two <coughs> smaller recital spaces. It will house the first purpose-built concert hall in Christchurch for quite some time. The building is planned to start toward the end of this year for an opening early in 2016. As a facilities provider to the arts community, we look forward to once again providing a platform for the promotion of, of both music, opportunity and excellence. Thank you. Uh, the next part of the puzzle where we're still quite, uh, not quite signed up on the dotted line, but from the Chief Executive of the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra, um, Gretchen LaRoche is about to tell us about how close she is to signing up. <laughs> well, no pressure, but she is. She's very enthusiastic. But we, this, the other, yeah, look, I'll stop. I'll get myself into trouble. <laughs> Welcome, Gretchen. Thank you very much. Well, unfortunately, I've left my pen at home, so uh, maybe not today, but um, I'm really pleased that we're in very, very uh, constructive uh, discussions anyway. Following the earthquakes in February 2011, the musicians of the orchestra provided the board and staff of the CSO with a very clear message. They wanted to do whatever they could to help the community rebuild their city. And as an orchestra, what we have to offer is music. 
So like many others, we were not able to return to our place of work, so we set about finding any space that we could squeeze 70 musicians into for rehearsals and began performing wherever we could. School halls, churches, and including a particularly memorable set of concerts in the New Brighton Scout Den. We also recommenced our outreach and education program, going out into schools as they reopened, working with more than 10,000 students during that year alone. And since that time, we've been on a journey of discovery, not just about ourselves as an orchestra, but also about the role that we play in our community and the contribution that we can make to the lives of the people of Christchurch. Along the way, our audience has become more adventurous in their arts consumption and are readily embracing the new and unfamiliar. We've discovered that Christchurch's thirst for the arts has not diminished. In fact, like many other arts organisations in the city, we've been experiencing annual audience growth. We've also found a new energy and spirit, and one that reflects the changing identity of Christchurch itself. But this story isn't just unique to us. It's the story of many artists and arts organisations of the city. Arts organisations have demonstrated remarkable adaptability over the past three and a half years, and along the way, many of us have learned new and more inventive ways of doing things. And as we begin to make the transition from temporary to permanent facilities, we bring these experiences with us, undoubtedly making us a more responsive and resilient sector. And the development of the Performing Arts Precinct is a great way, not only to demonstrate Christchurch's commitment to the arts, placing it at the heart of the city centre, but also provides opportunities for performing arts groups to connect with audiences in new and exciting ways, bringing the arts into the everyday lives of our community. And so while there are still challenges facing us, I feel confident about what lies ahead for the arts in Christchurch and also the contribution that the CSO can make to its future. Thank you. So from the about to commit to, um, to Neil Cox. Neil's the Managing Director of the Isaac Theatre Royal and they have more than signed up. You know, they're here and they've spent a massive amount of money and emotional energy putting together their theatre which is soon to reopen. So um, welcome Neil to the, to the stage. Uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you for your kind words earlier and Mr. Minister Brownlee as well. Um, Roger, we'll we're delighted to be uh, where we are. I mean, you can see from uh, outside the, the windows, even though it's raining, that uh, the building's coming along at a rapid pace. Internally, it's just a, a hive of activity. The wall linings are going up. There's a lot of restoration work going. And we're still making changes, doing this, and uh, operating at a really fast pace. So um, it's going to be a very exciting. Um, you would have seen in the, in the media probably two weeks ago that we set an opening date for the theatre on the 17th of November. Um, that's a date that we're going to commit to and um, a lot of the organisations who've been um, desperate to get back into the theatre and, and uh, perform um, the large-scale productions that we're famous for um, are pretty delighted. On the 20th of uh, November, which is already on sale, um, Royal New Zealand Ballet uh, come down to Christchurch and we'll be back in the Christchurch, uh, in the Isaac Theatre Hall for the first time since November 2010 and performing with Royal New Zealand Ballet will be the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra. So, so this, this, this precinct and this um, gathering and putting together of like minds is really a, is really a joy for us and, and to have you guys also performing at our venue. And then Gretchen, beyond that, on the 20th of December, I believe you, the CSO will be on our stage and not underneath our stage um, for the first time in the, I've, I've, since I've been there, the CSO has never, never been on our stage. And some of the technical enhancements that we're putting in the theatre are allowing that to happen. So um, we really, really look forward to having you back there. Um, of course, on the whole precinct, we're delighted with our new neighbours. I know everyone personally and have, have worked with uh, the process with Warwick and his team as well to, to get us to where the stage is today. And... Um, We've been publishing a photo from 1907 when the theatre first opened and it was, when it was first built it was sort of standing on its own and for a period of time over the last couple of years I was hoping that wasn't going to happen again. Um, but of course uh, we're delighted on the announcements today and thank you very much um, for the commitment from all parties on that. Um, 
many people to thank throughout the whole process for the rebuild of the Isaac Theatre Royal. Um, two uh, special um, uh, supporting uh, organisations who've helped us raise the money and put a lot towards what we, our rebuild title, uh, target is, is uh, New Zealand Lottery Board. Um, they've uh, committed over $8 million to the rebuild. And also the Christchurch Earthquake Appeal Trust, which is the Prime Minister's own initiative. Thank you very much for your support on there as well. Collectively, they've, those two organisations have, have put 11 million into the, into the rebuild of the Isaac Theatre Royal. So it's uh, filled a massive gap for us and, and can and help us achieve our targets. We're not quite there. Um, we still have a little bit of a shortfall. Um, so we'll be passing the hat around later. But uh, it's, we, this project will be completed. We have the, the uh, means to be able to do that and, and loan capabilities for the business going forward. But we'd rather not, obviously, um, take loans out at, at commercial rates. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to fundraise as this pro progress uh, building progresses. Um, Mayor Leanne Diazel as well to, to thank the Christchurch City Council for, for their support, um, a, uh, a two million loan to the Theatre Royal Charitable Foundation was agreed uh, sometime last year, so, um, and that's going through the process now and, and also support from the mayoral fund in, in previous days. So, uh, so um, the project's nearly there. As I say, 17th of, of, of uh, November is the date. Another concert was announced today, this morning, on Breakfast TV, which will be our first international music concert to go into the Theatre Royal. And for those of uh, progressive rock fan fame, um, Jethro Tull will be performing at the Isaac Theatre Royal on uh, December the 17th. I'll be there for absolutely for that one. Um, and finally, major thanks to our rebuild team. We've had a, a really, really, really strong team working on the on the. Um, development and the, and, the, and the rebuild process and continues to be a really, really tight, well-organized and, and, and strongly committed team to getting this, this job done. Um, also to the public of Christchurch, we'd love to thank every time we say something in the media, the, the media coverage that constantly goes out and what we feed to our own database, the response and the positivity of what we're, of what we're doing is, uh, is clear for all to see. Everyone is really looking forward to the Isaac Theatre Royal being reopened, as, I, as am I. So we're looking forward to working with our new neighbours. I know they'll come progressively um, to Bronwyn and, and Steve. First cab off the rank behind us will be, will be fantastic. So, um, but for the remainder of this year, our commitment is to get the Isaac Theatre Royal reopened. And uh, to my own uh, board of directors who've been enormously supportive in this entire process, I couldn't have done it without you. And we look forward to uh, having you all back at the ITR soon. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. So the last part of the puzzle, the puzzle, is Philip Aldridge from the Court Theatre. The Court have obviously got going, obviously. Well, they got going in very quickly after the quakes. Um, they're out, way out there in Addington, and we're very much looking forward to having them back in the city proper very soon. Welcome. Come, Philip. Uh, thank you, Roger. Um, um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And, and yes, I mean, uh, we too are absolutely thrilled um, with this announcement. Thank you, Prime Minister. It's great to see this uh, collaboration between the, the city and, and the council and, and which will facilitate this, this precinct going forward. Um, Ross, Ross just handed me an, an opening gag, um, as he sometimes does. Um, and, and I'm actually not going to. I'm going to break a habit of a lifetime and not use it. Because last time I did this, um, uh, I was speaking um, just before uh, the Mayor, Bob Parker. And um, I introduced him with one of uh, Ross's gags. And Bob didn't speak to me for another two years. <laughs> <coughs> um, the, the, we're often asked, why, why would you want to leave Addington? which um, I guess in years past is not something that was asked of the goodly burgers of Addington uh, very often. Um, but now um, we, we get asked that, and because we are up and running, 2012 was a, a record, year, record year of attendance for us. Um, the first three months of this year have passed um, those records. Um, so we, we are thriving, but we are operating with, with one arm tied behind our back. It's actually a much smaller facility than we had at the Arts Centre. So to be offered the opportunity to be part of the Performing Arts Precinct, um, which is not only important for um, the arts, but for, for the people, for the, for the culture of the city, and for the economic heartbeat of the city, because we all want to have an internationally attractive city, and that means uh, having the arts at our heart. 
Um, but for us, it's also the the opportunity to have what's you know we've 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 described it a, and, and and Warwick has very kindly described it you know, the the opportunity for a world class facility. And this will be the very first time that we have built in New Zealand a um, a facility for an entire producing company. There actually isn't another theatre um, like this that produces their, everything in house. And so, of course, if we can if we can achieve that, and we can um, we can see that we've got a sustainable business, we are totally committed to being part of this precinct, and we look forward to this whole area being activated, um, and it all being coordinated, which is fantastic. So, thank you very much, and we're delighted to be here. So thank you very much. I think you all get a feel for what we're what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring together, if you like, the old and the established of New Regent Street. The refurbished, um, rebuilt Isaac Theatre Royal, the brand new music centre, um, other players including the Court Theatre um, coming into town as well, the, the, the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra, bring it all together, bring it in together in a real place which has got a real heart. Bring it connecting it to the River Precinct as well. It really comes together in one corner of Christchurch and I think that is just so, so exciting. So thank you very much for coming and joining us today Prime Minister. Um, we've got a, uh, some more food and a cup of tea for those who want to stay. Thank you very much.